Hi, welcome to Real Film Snobs. I'm Angela Yeager. And I'm Brian Michael. That clip you just saw at the top of the show is for Marriage Story. This is a Noah Baumbach box uh, newest film. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you, if you're watching this on YouTube, to go ahead and hit that subscribe button or hit the little bell, and uh, it'll notify you every time we post a new episode, which we do twice a month. Uh, that is a, a, a Noah Baumbach's a new film, uh, Marriage Story, starring Adam Sandler and Scarlett Johansson, who are a couple who are getting a divorce. It also stars uh, Laura Dern and Alan Alda, and of all people, uh, Ray Liotta as lawyers. A uh, very interesting and talented cast. Now, normally, uh, when it comes to films about uh, people breaking up or just arguing throughout, uh, John Cassavetes made a whole career of it, and I've had to sit through some of those films I really don't like. Uh, but there's occasionally, like, Who's Afraid of a Virginia Wolf that I do enjoy. Uh, this one I can recommend. I did really enjoy this one um, uh, quite a bit because of the performances of, of Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. Adam Driver is not so surprising if you really follow a lot of his films. Scarlett Johansson, rarely given that uh, op option, a, a lot of opportunity, especially in the, a lot of the superhero films, Marvel films that she's in. But she is, usually is the heart of those films, and we get to see a lot more from her here. here. Uh, and then Laura Dern is just fantastic. Well, she's um, always good. She's always really good, but she really rolls w with this one. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't love this movie. Be again, because yeah. it's just people arguing and they're getting a divorce, and it's, and it's not an easy situation, especially when they're, we're talking bi-coastal uh, situations here, who's getting the lawyer first and who's going to be paying for it. Mm -hmm. It's all this mumbo-jumbo stuff I really have a huge lack of interest in, and I, it, even though it's very realistic, and I'd, I'd rather watch people settle things with their fists sometimes in movies than through lawyers. It's tough. Then it would be domestic abuse, and it would be a totally different movie. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I enjoyed this. You know, the thing is, I kept thinking about two movies as I was watching this one. Um, one by Noah Baumbach, um, his best film, The Squid and the Whale, which is about divorce. About, in his case, it's yeah. semi-autobiographical about his parents' divorce. And, um, um, and it's through the lens of the child played by Jesse Eisenberg in that case. And that film is just a masterpiece, I think, um, because... In this case, it's very much through the couple's perspective, and the child is sort of in the background the whole yeah. time. Um, and so I felt like, so I couldn't help but think of The Squid and the Whale, which I think is a better film still. And then I also kept thinking about, weirdly enough, Annie Hall. And, and the reason I thought about that is I felt like this film has some some feelings of some you know earlier Woody Allen films, but also, of course, the New York and L.A. thing. The actress who wants to go to L.A., he's a New York guy. I couldn't help but think of that and think, oh, this is almost like, what if these characters, you know, ended up getting uh, married and having a kid? Of course, you know, her character isn't really like Diane Keaton's at all in, in Annie Hall, but there was just sort of that coastal, you know, issue that made me think of that. Um, I do think the performances are really strong. Um, you also, I also have to mention Julie Haggerty as um, Scarlett Johansson's mother, because she's an actress. I love oh, that yeah. I haven't got to see on screen in a yeah. long time and of course loved her in Lost She's in fantastic. America with Albert Brooks. Alan Alda in a very small part as you mentioned but also that made me think of Woody Allen again. I couldn't help it. So It's interesting that you bring up Woody Allen because I was thinking about Woody Allen a lot through this film hence we do a show together but um, is because with all that, a lot of that heavy stuff sometimes you do have to have a comic relief, and that's usually the Woody Allen character in, in something like Hannah and Her Sisters or, or Crimes and Misdemeanors, mm -hmm. and so you have this heavier stuff that's, you know, it's really hard to kind of sit through some of this. I mean, I really enjoy this film. Would I watch it again? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's not as heavy as, I don't think it's as heavy as, like, scenes from Bergman's Scenes from a Marriage or even Who's Afraid of Virginia Wolf. Well, yeah. There's a little bit of lightness from time to time. There is a few funny scenes. I felt like it could have even used maybe a little bit more of that. There's a few There's a yeah. few comic scenes with Adam Driver um, when the um, the person from the court comes to observe that him with funny. his child. Angela, it, that, see, and I was going to ask about that. It's funny slash horrifying. With the, with with the, the knife? knife? Yeah, it's, that's not. That's, it was funny. That's, it's funny. That's, I was yeah. laughing. I was la It's horrifying yeah. yet funny. I didn't think it was done right to be funny. It was just, oh, I thought it was, it was really funny. Odd, I was laughing and um, quite a and bit. I felt bad. And, oh. and I think Adam Drive, they're both really so excellent. Before we, because we don't have a lot of time with this one, do you think the movie was balanced between the two characters? No, I think it's more from his perspective. And oh, sorry, I don't that. think that it's. I think, I think her, really char unfair. her character is well written, and I think she has. There's definitely, you know, her perspectives in there. But I definitely think it's more from his character's perspective. I, I, he gets some of the big scenes. He gets the scene, the one we just mentioned yeah. with the knife. He also gets the big singing scene with the Sondheim yes. song. He gets more moments of levity in the movie than she does. I but think it's a little unjust towards her because the most, the more, the 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 most of the curveballs thrown 
are by her or her lawyer. And we kind of see him see. a little more sympathetic. Because We're seeing it more through from his eyes, yeah. I feel like. And, and, you know, it is a male I, director doing I, his perspective on the divorce. Oh, so. oh really? Well, I'm just I would saying. I guess you could say that. And that was too bad because I thought it was such a nice job between the two of them. I thought it wasn't until later I thought about it. I'm like, gosh, it did show a lot more of Adam Driver in there because I, I did enjoy Scott Johansson so much in this and, and her character. But it was a lot more But we also see heavy. her perspective in the film. And he does try sure. to get that in there. And we see, you know, that especially as the film goes on, you know, some of his issues. But I do feel like... The divorce, in terms of its impact on well, them, you, is more from his. When I think of divorce movies, though, you think of Kramer versus Kramer, and that is such a. Uh, it's very male heavy in that movie. Well, that movie because I, I recently think watched it last. So than yeah, this one. I, yeah, I watched that in the last year, and it was just like, wow, really? You think a mother would abandon a child? Hmm. Yeah. Who wrote this? And this is great <laughs> because these this? are both really this? good people who both really love their child. Yes. There's not really anyone at fault here. It just no. didn't work out, yeah. and I, that's really a realistic scenario. Interesting. But it's just the fact that they have to be actors and directors, New York, L.A. It's just kind of like, can't they just be? Yeah, but I guess it could be regular people and look like Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver, so maybe that's part of the well, maybe more like him. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to our next movie, which is Black Christmas. Ooh, we have a horror movie and a holiday-themed movie in one. Let's take a look. At, let's take a look at the clip. Okay. Ooh. So uh, Black <laughs> Christmas. This is a remake, and I'm going to use air quotes. Uh, by this is a film made by uh, Sophia Takel, who also wrote it as well. And um, this is, tells the loose, loose remake of the 1974 classic film that I love so much, directed, directed by Bob Clark, um, about a sorority who is terrorized within. But this one adds a new twist, and it actually leans towards perhaps it's a, it's a conspiracy. And um, it's filled with a lot of jump scares and some jump scares, a few other jump scares, uh, a heavy score, and then a lot of girl power at the last minute that just kind of just misses the mark a little bit. Um, this is a very uneven film. Uh, I really wanted to like this one because I love the original. The first remake was so terrible. I was like, oh, it could never be that terrible. And it's not. Um, but this one had the new yeah, twist because the first it's, remake. Yeah. The, this, is the, yeah this is the second remake and a new twist on it. But uh, And I kind of it was trying to push for a little more of a, more of a woke audience in terms of, of girl power. Or, I was like saying girl power, women power, or the empowerment. Um, that uh, certainly there are the, the sororities and frat houses. There's a lot of... Um, sure. Bad things going on there, and we see a little bit of, of that. Um, the other problem with this movie, though, is there's a lot of pretty people. I'm not saying that they're not uh, talented, but if you ever watched a television show on CW, and I'm sorry if you do, um, when you have so <laughs> many pretty people uh, constantly in something, they become very bland. And right. unless, they're, unless they're a fantastic actor or something, even that, they just kind of get blamed. You need a character actor. You need someone that looks like me or something like that mm -hmm. with no chin or something interesting, a bald, something like that. And after a while, they kind of blend and they kind of look together and they kind of look, you know, it's like, what's one yeah, all the girl, men, another guy? Yeah, yeah and that's Every all the people. All the men, all the yeah, yeah, all the guys are like casting, handsome bros yeah. and yeah, and all the women, for the most part, are, I mean, Imogene Poots, who plays the central character of Riley, I've seen her in some other films and she's, you know, a decent actress. I've seen her in other things, yeah. but she's He's about the only one that stood out. Um, and, of course, Carrie Ewells is the professor, and we've seen him in things like The Princess Bride, but nothing in a long time. And he's um, always been really creepy, so he's perfectly cast. As well. Yeah. It's so, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I wanted to like this for the same reasons you mentioned, and I think it's great that they're making, you know, more female-empowered films, but the problem is it still has to be scary. And this movie is not scary, and I scare easily. Yeah. I scare at movies that I shouldn't even be scared at, and this movie did not scare me at all. I yeah. didn't give it a single thought after I left the theater. It's just no. not scary. It, I didn't see the last remake of Black Christmas, but the original, one of the things that had going for it, and yeah, it was more sexist, and it was the you know 70s, and the sorority girls were whatever, yeah. but one of the things that had going for it was the mystery, because you didn't really know oh, who was doing it, or so why, scary. or what was happening. People yeah. were just disappearing. This movie gives yeah. away its tell right at the beginning, so there's no mystery. Oh, yeah. And then when they do sort of get it they're they're combining sort of this black magic thing with like the fraternity thing and then we have this message of sexual assault on campus and i think it's great horror movies can have message jordan peele has shown us that um that you can have a scary movie and it can still have a message yeah. but it's still got to be scary or it's got to deliver in some way yeah. And this movie is just not scary in any, it has no mystery at all. Horror movies should have a sense of mystery. It also looked really flat to me. I don't know if you know, it's just the oh, look really? of it was just kind of flat. And that mm. might have been partially the use of the CW looking actors across the world, but it just felt like a, it made, felt like a made for TV movie. Yeah. In not a good way. So it's just really disappointing. You know, and they keep launching mm. all these, I had to say anything about the whole female thing, because I knew you were going to get on me about this, but 
the thing is, all these things with whether it's Charlie's Angels or Ghostbusters with women, they just keep taking these former versions of movies with men and putting women in them and then saying, oh, look, they didn't do well. It's like, well, you could have something that's created by a woman that's original, like The Babadook. Great movie with a very specific female perspective, yeah. but it's an original story. It really works. It's just like give women a chance to be creative and show a vision rather than just trying to fit them into a box that already uh, exists. I see. For I think men. it's more or less that a lot of more male directors get a fail upwards. They get they're given something and it doesn't do well, but they continue to ha they get two or three to four. Well, they five get a chance. Yeah. Like whereas, whereas female this, directors don't. Well, that's they, true. When they get a bomb, they're done. And, and if Elizabeth this movie Banks, bombs, then maybe yeah. they won't get a chance. But Elizabeth Banks just recently got. I think she's getting a Marvel film after Charlie's Angels did didn't do well, which I know makes you so happy. But um, it was nice to see that. So because you you, you just see that over and over again, where, where men given are given different chances, yeah. uh, multiple. But maybe also take don't. chances on things that aren't remakes yeah. occasionally. You know, that's what horror movies that aren't remakes, ones that Get Out and Us, have been you know exciting. To yeah, watch. but this is a good this is a good, good opportunity because the, the, like I said, the first remake was terrible, and this was such a great premise and idea. And yeah. gosh, you could have almost even. Stole a couple of the the, the kills in the original one because they were so and plus good. And a lot of people haven't seen the yeah, original. and the people don't they haven't seen that except for you and us. And um, <laughs> but they, yeah, they could have just you know just lifted those right off there and did, called it an homage and had a great scare and done that. Yeah. But when the score is going, the score did not trust and it was the just audience. Like, yeah, yeah, so. I know, I know the scare's coming up. Don't, don't you don't need to do that. And yeah, just and I hate jump scare. Handed. I hate an empty jump scare when it's nothing. A cat, you know. Oh god. Yeah. Okay, so definitely can't recommend that one. No. So we'll move on to our next movie, which is Dark Waters, and we have a clip for you to take a look at. Okay, you saw a clip for Dark Waters, and this movie is about a corporate attorney, played by Mark Ruffalo, who takes on an environmental case for a farmer against one of the largest chemical companies. This movie is the newest by one of my favorite directors, Todd Haynes, um, and it's, as I mentioned, stars Mark Ruffalo in the title character of, uh, or this, the central character of Robert Billot, um, who's a real-life lawyer. This is all based on a true story. Um, he took on DuPont and is still taking on DuPont, as we learn at the end of the movie. The case is continuing. This is actually a movie. I thought this is something that was fixed. I was like, oh, cool, I got my nonstick pan. I'm fine. Ah! No, no, go home and throw away all <laughs> no, your nonstick pans no, it's after a you watch this one. Movie. It's not a. It's you know, a, yeah, it's there's Teflon a couple is on all the nonstick pans. <laughs> I, I, I got stainless steel a long time ago for this very reason, people. But, you know, this is one of these kind of procedural uh, whistleblower type movies, and we've seen, you know, someone's mentioned Spotlight or Aaron Brockovich. I love these kind of movies. And I and the thing is interesting because yeah. I read an interview with Todd Haynes, who is a director not known for doing these kind of movies. He usually does very esoteric art house movies. But he said, oh, this is my favorite genre of Hollywood movie. It's a movie where you watch someone sort of unravel and slowly find out these, thing, these things and kind of put together the, mm. these clues. And, and it's a little bit nerdy, you know, because the Mark Ruffalo character is not a, this is not a um, John Grisham type of lawyer. He doesn't get out in front of the yeah. courtroom and say things eloquently. <laughs> no. He's kind of a schluppy guy. He's a corporate attorney, which Bill means he's Pullman not used to doing. Role. Yeah, he gets that part. <laughs> but there's a reason they get him to speak during. He's yeah. not a, the kind of attorney that goes in front of people and speaks. He's a paper attorney. He's a guy who puts stuff together on paper and does the research. It's hard to make a, a movie paper, yeah. exciting that's about research, but Spotlight's another one that did that where they show them doing the research to put together what the priest yeah. did. Here he's putting together the research. Thing. Okay, he starts thinking it's just a small case, thinking this one farmer and his cows have been poisoned. Maybe it's something with this one creek. And then instead he unearths this huge, vast environmental contamination. Big time. Big time. I thought it was a great movie. I, I really loved it. I, I wanted to give it four stars, but I, I couldn't quite just get it there. Um, you know, I want to give big props to, to Anne Hathaway, even though she's playing the wife and it's yeah, a smaller role. role. Yeah. But you know, you're working with a great director. Who gives it? Who, who cares? You work with a great director. That's what you want to do. And she's really good in it. And they really have a nice chemistry. of like Anne Hathaway and Mark Ruffalo. Really? You wouldn't this think. Is, yeah. These are the two Catwoman and the Hulk. And at first, when I saw work. her hair, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's done it before in Brokeback Mountain. And then uh, is it Bob or Bill Camp that plays the farmer? I, I, oh, I, I didn't, didn't write, write down his, his name. name. Now he's a great character. He actor. is. He nails this. I've lived in Salem all my life. You go in any directions, uh, you'll bump into, into farmland, and you meet farmers, or if you know farmers, this guy has it down cold. As soon as he walked on the screen, I'm like, oh, I know exactly who this guy is. I know exactly he is not going to give one uh, inch. He's going to be very determined. Um, I loved his character. I thought he was fantastic. And if you look up his IMDb page, boy, around 2010, I think he changed uh, manager or uh, uh, management and has been in some amazing films, even though they were small. His eyebrows parts. alone could He's be their own character. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> and I 
loved it because because he's the the really the, kind of the heart of it because he's the reason why we're fighting. He's the reason why we're yeah. there. And what's his we see happened what's to his happening. farm is yeah. is horrible. It's awful. Right. And you and know, to his family. And Tim Robbins comes in and he has the passionate speech about how this is who we'd be defended. Did it come across right to you? Did it, did it hit? The well, it seemed odd because at first I thought, okay, Tim Robbins is like, I thought at first, I thought it was interesting the way his character takes the twist because I thought at first he's like the, the corporate head honcho guy who's yeah. going to kind of stop Mark Ruffalo. But then he kind of ends up encouraging him, which yes. was really surprising for his yes. boss to do that. And I'm assuming that's based on the real case because the, the, the law firm must have encouraged they, this guy if he's been working on this case 20 years. But they, yeah, but they've been also, been, they've been also uh, defending a lot of chemical companies. That was right, my understanding. Right, so yeah. it was kind of weird that he did this and then he had his big impassioned speech slams his fist down and says American really business odd. needs to be better yeah. than this yeah yeah it is a little bit odd but Preachy. I yeah, he, that was his big moment. Maybe yeah. you know, and but I really enjoyed the movie, and I, I mean, I'm giving it four stars. I the the character you mentioned, the farmer. There's a lot of nice portrayals of the rural people that this, and it's not the usual thing you see in Hollywood movies. Todd Haynes isn't talking down or portraying them as you know dumb or simple. Like or that farmer, for instance, <laughs> he's actually really smart. He's people. he yeah. has saved all the samples oh, yeah. from his cows. He's been freezing them. He's yeah. been collecting samples. He knows something is wrong, and he knows how to yeah. gather the evidence. I mean, he's actually really intelligent, and he's trying to, and he's fighting for his survival. So I, I thought it was a really, a really good movie for this type. And I like Mark, Mark Ruffalo in this movie. He's not going to win any awards. It's no, not it's too. Enough. It's yeah. so unflashy. Uh, just towards it's the, the end, he has a, Yeah, towards the end, there he has some. He suffers from some stress, and that was it. And I was like, nope, nope, you're not going to. You have to be something. He need a limp or a hunchback. Or, <laughs> no, he's not going to uh, get any some awards. Some sort of horrible. Uh, it's way tough, too subtle uh, of a performance, yeah. but it's a great performance. And so. he's fantastic. I love, you know, hey, anytime. Rough flows on the screen. That's fine with me. That's great. Okay, so three and a half for you. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move on to my uh, our next movie, which is uh, my fresh picks, and these are or her fresh picks, uh, and these are critically acclaimed movies from the current year. And this one is Shadow by Zhang Yimou, uh, one of our favorite uh, mm -hmm. snobs, mm -hmm. favorites mm -hmm. on the show. Um, and this film is about court intrigue in ancient China uh, that involves a commander, his shadow or double, the commander's wife, and a spoiled king who is trying to take back a city. That is way simple. The The plot <laughs> of this movie is yeah. so intricate and so Holy long. smokes. And I have to warn you, it takes about 30 minutes before you have any idea, at least if you're me, until you have any clue what's going on in this movie. There's like 30 minutes. There's a lot of talking in the first 30 minutes. And I was like, what is happening? And when is the martial arts going to come in? <laughs> That's what I kept thinking. But it does eventually get going. It has an interesting look, um, very much black and white, sort of like the yin and yang sign that they talk about. Some of the most stunning oh, photography. Oh, yeah, amazing. How, yeah, how, seen. who, who does this? Who, the only colors that we see on the screen are skin, bamboo, and blood. That's it. Everything no else is color. metallic, white, black, metal. That's Right, it. and not like that CGI blue metallic no. look. No, no, it's very much the yin and yang. It's yes. like this gray, white, and black. So that's well, all it, it does help with the CG when there is needed, and it kind of covers. It's a nice little cover, cover on that. So I'm fine with that. So this is my, you know, uh, if you're familiar with his work at all, and, and if you know, a Hollywood director, if you're an action director, steal. Steal, steal, steal from this man. Because trust me, his next film, he'll invent something completely different that you can steal from again. If you're going to do action, do it this way. It's absolutely incredible. They fight with umbrellas yeah, and the umbrellas. Umbrellas. <laughs> umbrellas. The umbrella and and battalion so scene cool. towards the end when that happened. The whole oh. army comes in with the umbrellas and they're, it's hard to, you they, let, you they're sliding see it in on them, they're covering it on them, they're swimming. I mean, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then to have it be the, the, the big dis the discovery is with your fighting with an umbrella, you have to be the yin to the yang of the, the strong, fierce, and, and males type of thing, using a feminine stance and working with that and having a delicate touch. I mean, it was just, yeah. there's so many things that happen in this film. And then the ending has... Surprise after surprise after double cross after surprise. Lots of great like, roles for women in this crap. movie, like yeah. he always does in all of his movies. There was so much going on in this film. I was so blown away. The, I mean, if I had to pick any little thing and split any hair, was that I wish there was some color there towards the end because that, because when they had the dueling armies, I'm always like, you know, Kurosawa made one army yellow, one army green. I was like, I can see who was fighting who. But it was a little hard that, to tell yeah. who was who at the yeah, very end. Just yeah. a little bit. But, I mean, the slow motion with the water and with a sword through it. He's done this before, but 
God, it is. You could watch it all day. Yeah. It really. I know truly this is, is one I'm really sad I didn't get to see on the big screen. I don't think yeah. it even opened anywhere near us, but it is available on streaming now. I really highly recommend people. It went check a bunch it of. Out. It went to a bunch of festivals, and then we knew into Netflix. I put it on my list, and then it got buried there. And I've been trying to get to it. I'm glad you put it on the show, and so yeah, it's got really good there. reviews, very critically acclaimed. So it's definitely one to gorgeous. check out. Yeah, and, um, and he said he was inspired by calligraphy, and so I thought that was really cool. The the look of calligraphy for the whole film to look like that. So I thought. I that that's totally cool. see that though. Yeah, but if you're uh, if you're not familiar with his films, he made you know House, House of the Flying Daggers. He made Hero, um, which kind of bleeds into this one certainly. Then he made To Live and Raise the Red Lantern, which I think yeah. this might be the greatest Chinese film ever, if not the top ten. I absolutely love and adore that film. And House of the Flying Daggers is sort of in this vein more in terms of the yeah, martial arts, the kung so. fu and the and the um, the wire work and the just the just making it a ballet. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. But those fight scenes are so good. Um, gosh, yeah, just steal from it. Me. I have to say, it took me a while to figure out what was going on with the plot. It's a complicated story, actually. It's a little complicated plot, and um, it's always hard for me in any movie when they start talking about things when people aren't in the room. I'm like, you need to wear a name tag at first so I know what's going on. I have the yeah. same thing with period pieces. You know, well, especially when they're all sort of in the same colors, like you said, so you're kind of yeah, like... Yeah, sometimes uh, you can't see everybody, but a little tiny bit, and yeah, that's a little tough. Sometimes some people might pause a movie and read a little bit of the plot on Wikipedia to know exactly, and get right back to it. Now, that's, that might not be a critique of the film because it helps a little bit to have some aids because if, if we were watching it together, we might have paused and said, what the heck is going on, Angela? So it's, what's the difference? It's okay to do that sometimes. Yeah. So our next uh, segment is for the streaming pick. Uh, this is for me and my gal. <laughs> no, that's actually the name of the movie. It's, I'm not making a reference to Angela. Though that was going to be the name of the show at first. Uh, this is a, a film directed by Busby Berkeley, not Bubsby Berkeley, as I like to say, starring Judy Garland, you might have heard of her, and uh, Gene Kelly in his film debut. And this is a, a story about two vaudevillian performers <coughs> who uh, find romance and love, and it's interrupted by a little thing called World War II. Um, Gene Kelly really just had it to, to, from the start. It really had it right there from the beginning, and it was pretty impressive to sit here and watch him on on screen and just be Gene Kelly. I mean, this is his first I would not picture. have known this was his first movie because yeah. he's immediately Gene Kelly. I mean, he's Fantastic. like the way you always know. Yeah. He's movie sca- star, smirky, Boom. just Done. swagger. He just yeah. comes in like he's not a character all, actor. Same. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's World War One actually. Was it World War One? Well, it's, it, it came out during World War. II. It came out in 1942, but it's set during Thank World you. War One. And then, uh, and then, and then, of course, Judy Garland is Judy Garland. She's absolutely fantastic. They have a nice chemistry um, between the two of them. Um, but what was really interesting about this film was that um, he, it takes on draft dodging. Yeah, and, it was, it was um, interesting. Something that he didn't want to, yeah, that, that uh, he did. And um, I thought that was really brave, and they actually had to play it down and make him more of a sympathetic character because they knew the audience would I know the original story. This. That's when they added all the scenes of him yeah. getting heroic when he finally went out there and volunteered for the cause because they were worried that the audiences would be anti the Gene Kelly character. Because when he first dra- dra- dodges the draft, you're like, ooh, this is I not know. what I was, I was like, wait, what? what? His character's kind no? of You can't selfish. do that. Yeah. You don't do that. Not, not in 1942, oh, so especially as you're, yeah. the U.S. is going in World War II. Yeah, so I was shocked. It was the first uh, movie that, Judy Garland as an adult, you know, had her name above the title, yeah. and she actually um, really vouched for Gene Kelly. She wanted him for this movie. Yeah. This is the first of three films they ended up making together, including one of your favorites, oh, The Pirate, Pirate. God, and Summer Stock, um, which I just finally Ooh. recently watched. Did you watch it? Yes, I did. The dancing scene <coughs> with the piece of paper? Yes. Oh my really, God. I think that's one of Gene Kelly's best dancing I, scenes I, I, of his career. Oh there, my a God. lot of the other movies yeah. just hokum. They show but that singing scene, in the rain, and I'm like, and then show the the dancing with the paper. I know the, a lot of the a lot of summer stock is hokum, but that scene is worth watching it's, the whole movie for. I, I like the movie a lot, but that, I mean. Oh yeah. my God! So uh, yeah, but uh, this is a, a black and white film. It's 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 available on streaming if you're watching Criterion, which Angela watches just a little too much of it. I'm starting to worry about her. Oh She's come on! Mainline it here pretty soon if she could. This doesn't have a, you know one about. thing interesting thing about this with the dancing sequences. It doesn't have any of the usual Busby Berkeley flourishes. It's very straight on, which I think is okay. You don't yeah. have, he, he can't do geometric patterns every time. Would, but there was at one point I life. thought you wouldn't even know he directed this yeah. movie. I kept looking for anything from him and yeah. and. Uh, um, no. Just one overhead shot with ladies on their side. I mean, it's well, it's well photographed. You can <laughs> see the happy. dancing, and, and it, the dancing looks great, but I just didn't see Busby Berkeley. I don't, you know, I don't know if there's any really memorable dancing scenes-ish in that film, because I'm trying to remember it, because I saw this, I, saw, I watched all three of their films right back to back, and so now I'm kind of getting them mixed up together a little bit. Well, this is I black and white one. one. Yeah. The other two are color. Brown face. He's, he's not in brown not face, and there's no, oh, and, and she's uh, quite a bit thinner in this one than in the later ones. Be nice. 
Oh God! No, they actually Angela. said it's Judy Garland. Jeez. Poor Judy Garland. I just feel bad for her. Every movie, she looks so different. Gene Kelly looks exactly the same. <laughs> like it was just. I watched these back to back with Summerstock ten years later, and I was like, he's to hell. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Let's go back here. We can both. We holidays. both can recommend uh, the Marriage Story. We can't recommend uh, Black Christmas. We recommend uh, Dark Waters highly, as well as the Sha as well as Shadow. And then for me and my gal, uh, I'd say Shadow and Dark Waters are my big two. Big oh, both yeah. those two. Shadow is uh, his four stars. Easy. Uh, we like to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. You can listen to, listen to us on KMZ, uh, KMUZ. You can watch us on YouTube. Uh, you can watch us on uh, Cable Access in Silverton, as well as Corvallis and Salem. Uh, we want to thank our amazing sponsors, our fantastic and hardworking crew, and my beautiful co-host, as well as you, the viewer at home. Have a great day and great movies.